Patch 14.6 is a meta breaker, and while not every broken champ in the game got nerfs, a lot of them did. So, are these smaller nerfs enough to shoot down the dragon, and is Karma's reign of terror in the middle lane finally over? Let's get into it with a fresh tier list for 14.6. And as always, if you feel there is a busted champ that we are sleeping on here at Gamerleap, make sure to drop it down below in a happy little comment. So top lane this season is shaping up to be a kingdom built off of Aatrox, tanks, and ranged top laners. With that being said, there are two wild changes for this patch for top. The first one being that Sion is back and ready to reclaim his throne as the king of tanks. The second is a change to Rek'Sai and how she found her new home in the top lane. Sion will be making his return towards the top end of the tier list with some insane buffs. With the damage to the Q being increased by 15% total AD, this champion can finally make its comeback through either his lethality build or full tank with Titanic Hydra. His W is also getting a massive buff with an added 4% buff to his shield, which scales based on his max HP. Now that being said, we will not be putting Sion in S tier just yet yet, we would like to see how he performs versus the other lane tanks and if he can keep up with the Udias and Orns. And then, who knows, he might just become an S tier pick. Now do bear in mind that this is just a tier list. Click the link in the description box down below right now to sign up to Gameloop.com and master every single champion covered in this video. We've got hundreds and hundreds of guides authored by challenger coaches for every role and scenario you can think up. We're talking macro guides, champion specific courses, learning deep dives and more. So again, hit the link below right now to sign up. It's going to be awesome. This next top lane champion has been something we've been keeping a close eye on and it has proven to be quite good and it is actually top Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has taken her new mini rework top as her E now deals at percentage health damage on top of her passive being an insane lane sustain mechanic. Many top Rek'Sai's are not building Bruiser however, instead relying on her base damage to deal the hits while building tanky to add crazy value to fights over time. The first item many choose to build is Sunfire for the wave clear, and because of Rek'Sai's ability to stick on top of targets with her knockup, it gets the value of the burn quite well. Pair it alongside a Spirit Visage, and she heals like Munda during ult. She is quite the new and interesting pick if you wish to pick her up. No other major top lane changes have gone down, but we must continue to stress that Aatrox, without fail, is still the god of top lane. Mid lane, this patch is still in a little bit of a stale state, as not that much is changing in 14.6, mages still run the meta, and assassins are actually getting slight nerfs through items. That being said, this patch has removed two very strong champions from the mid lane pool. So let's talk about it. Karma got nerfed, dude. Plain and simple, this champion was way too strong for her own good. The ability to perma shove waves and rapid fire mantra cues was a little bit nuts to deal with. Riot did, however, move her back to the support role with the following changes. Her mana growth is lower, but the mana region growth is higher. This means that levels will not matter as much for Karma anymore as she was mainly a mid laner in previous patches. The cooldown refund on Q going down by 1 isn't much of a difference maker, but the mana cost changes of Q are huge. Going from a flat 45 mana cost to 80 at max rank is mental. Solo lane Karma will definitely feel this one. Mantra going up in cooldown is a bit rough for both roles, but this champion definitely needed these nerfs. Lastly, the Mantra shield buff is very small, but the base going up early is nice to block an extra auto here and there. Overall, this champion will for sure drop a lot of tiers, and it'll be interesting to see if she is still playable. And all right, Galio got a lot of changes as well, and we're going to be summarizing it down for y'all. Galio's passive is now a flat cooldown that is not affected by CDR. The damage is lower by a bit, and hitting champions or epic monsters reduces the cooldown by 3 per spellcast. These changes are hurtful to mid lane Galio, as his ability to one shot waves was really OP. However, for support Galio, it does help. Q is going to go down in damage, but also lower in cooldown, which again is bad for mid Galio, but not bad for support. Support. Galio W is being changed to favor more tanky Galio builds as there is now a new ratio. The W now scales with 1% per 100 bonus health, which is really nice for all of the support Galios going Locket or Trailblazer. Lastly, the E is being nerfed overall, with the biggest change being a 30% damage nerf to non-champions, meaning Galio's mid-wave clear is kind of dead. All hail, support Galio. And alright, ADC is back, with crit being buffed and smolder being nerfed. 
For a while now, ADC has been very low agency role, with ADCs not really getting any love from the new season's item reworks. There haven't been many changes to any of the crit items until now. ADCs will be back in action with the new IE buff and the new meta abuse of Static Shiv. Originally for 14.6, Smolder was going to be completely gutted, but one change didn't go through, which saves him barely. In the patch previews, Smolder was supposed to have his Q stack requirement raised to 275 from 225. This would make Smolder completely worthless, but unfortunately, that didn't go through for us Smolder haters. Instead, the changes that did go through targets his starting threshold, which is now 6.5% from 7.6. And a big change is now enemies cannot be executed unless Smolder delivers the final blow. Allies can no longer grant Smolder kills by reducing enemies below threshold. Gone are the days of Pentakill Smolder. W got hit a tiny bit by making the orb radius smaller by 10, so now the W is no longer the width of a Karma Mantra Q. And lastly, the E got nerfed by 25% movement speed, so now he is more vulnerable to ganks. All in all, to be fair, this champion is very, very nerfed, as executing enemies was always his purpose, but he is still playable, you just got to actually deal the final blow. We will do a quick touch on Senna here by saying that Riot turned off the souls on minion kills again, as they have done for the past four seasons, so not much new to see here, folks. Just keep on playing Fasting Senna, since farming Senna is kinda dead. Now, let's talk about crit items. With Static Shiv not being nerfed, ADCs still have a very powerful and efficient wave clear item that now allows them to rush IE. Before 14.6, it was nice to spike 400 gold earlier, but now with Infinity Edge getting a 10% damage increase, ADCs are back online at two items. Pair it alongside Lord Dominic's regards, having its armor pen increased by 5%, and you have the classic 3-item ADC back in action. Navori got a bit of a nerf as they changed the recipe from pickaxe to BF sword, while Navori did get a 5 AD buff, it is a nerf overall because of the power creep going down for ADCs. Requiring 1300 gold in order to keep scaling really sucks, but it's fine nonetheless. While jungle is pretty much the same this patch as before, there are two champions we plan on honing in on, and those are Diana and Briar. We've had this discussion before where we talked about where Briar should be on the tier list, and you guys weren't very happy with her being so low. Well, Riot actually listened, and now she's even lower. <laughs> Diana, however, is making a comeback with a few nice buffs added into her kit, so let's get into it. Briar has gotten some tweaks in her kit, which is an overall net negative. As if we weren't already putting Briar quite low in the list before, she is definitely in the gutter now. Her Q got a new mechanic allowing her to jump towards, but her mobility was never really an issue. So while that is something of a buff, she gets her W attack speed lowered by 5%, her W healing reduced by 5%, and her R damage gets nerfed by 100 base damage. With how the jungle meta is right now, and how items still do not suit her playstyle, we really do not have any words for what is left for Briar. If you are a Briar man, we wish you the best of luck, as you're gonna need it to climb through the ELO gauntlets. But hey, we'd be happy to be proven wrong. Diana has gotten a buff to her attack speed ratio, but a small nerf to her attack speed growth. Overall, this is a net positive. As with early game jungle Diana, you want to rush recurve ball, so later on, you scale to make up for the early difference. Diana jungle is extremely balanced around her passive, with the bonus attack speed scaling linearly, meaning it scales every level. It makes her life much easier to play for clearing and early fights. The last big buff of jungle Diana is how her attack speed duration goes up from 3 to 5 seconds, meaning she can properly cycle through her abilities to increase her clear and skirmishing abilities. The lack of downtime within her passive and her basic abilities is now zero almost, so now she is back to being top tier. The only issue we see currently is how will items fit into place on Diana. You will still rush naturals, but what will be the most optimal next build? Full AP for burst, as AP items are insane right now, or will you opt for tank? which the items are also just as good. We will see how things develop. Support champions were not touched this patch, so let's talk about the changes to the support item itself. The TLDR here is that the gold gained is lower, but the upgrade is also lower. This means that stacking is a little bit slower and you cannot build items as early. The change is targeted towards all of the Camille's and ADC supports that have been dominating the support role. The last update is that you can no longer buy a Doran's item if you have a support item 
and vice versa. And that'll about be the final nail in the coffin for hardcore early game supports. And that'll be all for this tier list. Did you agree with our picks? Let's be real, probably not. So drop your pick for the most sleeper OP champion in 14.6 down below and you know what while you're down there remember to hit the link at the top of the description box to sign up to game leap and unlock access to hundreds of challenger guides thanks for watching we'll catch all of y'all again just a tad bit later